Thank you for joining us on A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. I'm Blessings Wynn. Today, scientist Dr. Eric Walsh returns to reveal the media's hidden spiritual agenda and its impact on social justice and politics of the day. Welcome back, Dr. Eric Walsh. Thanks for having me back. We want to jump right in. What do you think is causing witchcraft to rise in the U.S.? So, I think in our last session, we talked about the media's influence and how children are being exposed to it. I mean, simple television shows like Dora the Explorer to um, the famed Disney um, Fantasia where Mickey Mouse is a wizard has introduced this. And of course, these, the massive uh, popularity of books like Harry Potter and the movies that spin off of that. And I can go on and on. Obviously, there are tons of different ways that they're exposed to this. But what we find is as kids get older mm -hmm. into adolescence, and we talked about this in the last program, the, this loss of purpose, then they also have, um, be, are being almost trained to question almost every form of establishment. Mm -hmm. So when they, when, when there's a great article, uh, Why Witchcraft is on the Rise, um, and what they talk about is that when kids see instability, right, when young people are seeing instability, one of the things that happens is, um, and, and they don't trust the establishment, this is when they actually turn to witchcraft. Again, we'll go back to the Bible text, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. There's some connection there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I think we're beginning to see. This is, it's, it's growing so fast that it is, in a sense, in many ways, outpacing other religions. I, I, like I think we mentioned before. The nuns. The, the yeah, nuns. Category. So these people who used to be in a franchised, organized religion are now calling themselves nuns. Or they're being categorized that way because they don't have a religion at all. Mm -hmm. So it's increasing also because they see it as a weapon. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that last time, but they see it as a, a weapon, almost a revolutionary weapon against the establishment. So is there a lack of control that they're sensing in their lives that's causing them to look for power in these forms of witchcraft? I would say lack of control, mm -hmm. a lack of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and then what the world says is important is very selfish. It's your truth. It's all about you. Um, and so witchcraft kind of begins to start to answer that. They get power from the inside. Interestingly, a lot of times it overlays with Catholicism. Mm -hmm. One of the articles I read, the woman got into witchcraft but remained practicing Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So it's a, the blend that we talk, we see in Revelation chapter 16. Right. Um, so all of these things are beginning to happen. Um, and they're frightening things when you start to step back and look at them. Frightening from the sense that people are really asleep. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's right. going on and they believe they do. But there's another piece, like I said, it's this social justice movement. So one of the other books is um, Revolutionary Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. This book is a feminist guide to using spells, in, uh, incantations, and so forth to actually try and basically overthrow kind of like the patriarchy, the establishment, whatever you want to call it. So you start pulling it all together, mm -hmm. you create a world where the new spiritual currency is social justice. Right. It is um, fighting against those who are tyrannical, old school, closed minded. Mm -hmm. Here enters the anti-religion to Christianity, basically witchcraft. So we're going to back it up just a little bit, how media actually helps infiltrate this, because now it makes me think back to I Love Lucy, and there you have an, a feminist agenda. It makes me think of uh, Bewitched and I Love Jeannie, and how these women had to be pretty much just uh, deceitful women in order to overcome the oppression of their husbands. Absolutely. So you're saying we're now, we've been conditioned from way back then, and now this is actually leading to overt witchcraft. Absolutely, and I've actually had patience have said to me that they, you know I wanted this guy or whatever and you know so I went and did some spell to right. get him and I'm like a love bind yeah love I've heard bind of this, yes I mean, I, you know I, I'm I, you know I, I'm like I feel sorry for the guy I mean, right right Poor <laughs> does guy. he know you doing it you're trying to do this you you might have got him with just hello you know yeah, you, exactly you may not have even needed all that conversation but you're right and so the, what it is is it's it's a way again what happens when you move God from the center of a society and a culture something is gonna fill that void. Mm -hmm. And in some respects, it's self. What better than self than when you, all the things you're talking about on this program, everything from yoga, to some of the meditation stuff, to mysticism, to all of it the centers. Music, the media. It all comes back to me. Mm, that's right, self and ultimately, And here's the key word, it's pride. Mm -hmm. It's pride. If you go to um, Ezekiel 16, 49, the Bible says, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. What was the number one sin? Pride. Pride, fullness yeah. of bread. 
she was idle and she did not uh, take care of the poor and needy. The Bible says, and then it says, and then she committed abomination. Abomination came after. What started root was pride. It was about self. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, spiritualism is an exercise in self-worship. So I actually don't see much happening with the social justice movement, like when you talk about the idleness. You see a big, you know, uh, exhortation. They're saying, you know, shame on you, blue lives, you know, what you've done to us is, is just ridiculous. What you've done is harmful. But I don't really see any legislation changing. I don't see a real uh, impact. When I think of a movement in history that really made an impact, I think of people like Martin Luther King. And I don't see that weighing out here. So how, how do you explain that they get such media attention, but little comes of it? Well, I, I would step back and say the civil rights movement was born out of the church, Christianity, and the principles of Christ, mm -hmm. right? It was a nonviolent movie, movement, right. which, was, which basically was hung on the principle of turn the other cheek. I mean, you know, you can go deeper, but fundamentally it was, listen, no matter what they do to us, we're going to stay remain nonviolent and the world will see wickedness for what it is and it will change. And that's exactly what happened. That did happen. That's, yeah. not, the, that's not the mantra now. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have slides in some of my talks where they basically say, this is not your mother's civil rights movement or your grandmother's civil rights movement. They're going to, you know, do what they have to do. And so you could be sitting in a restaurant and they come storming in on people who have nothing to do with anything, mm -hmm. chanting and yelling and screaming and disrupting, uh, the, you know, the person's meal, and that's not God-like, that's not Christ-like, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, there's no reason you would do that. This is a new thing that's happening. So let me step back again. What we've found, though, is when you start to do the research, and, and we have an article from the Los Angeles Times they can put up, Black Lives Matter is a spiritual movement. Mm -hmm. And it talks about um, how this movement actually is born out of a lot of the practices of West African to be blunt, West African voodoo. And the founders themselves are feminist. Yes, Women. very much feminist. In fact, on, they took the page down now off the BLM website, but I saw it with my own two eyes. And some others have said, you know, I'm not wearing BLM stuff or doing it like some of the athletes because they were like, this, is, this goes against my religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. But it was anti-nuclear family, mm. as if a man wasn't, didn't, wasn't needed to be right. in that family. So it was a well, very- We see that repeated basically in IFA and these, uh, what you called OBIA, Oh yeah. Types of absolutely. worship where the man is, is denigrated and the woman is exalted. That can absolutely happen. And in this case, that's exactly what they had on that page. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you can find it somewhere online, but that's what they were doing. Why is it relevant? Because I, I was in, uh, you know, I was in a meeting with someone who was a formerly a high ranking U.S. government official. And I'm trying to be careful because I, I want to say the story without saying who I'm talking about. And I'll never forget one of the people who were activists for a certain community I remember them saying, we have to destroy the black church. Mm. And they were saying this loud. I was, I was at this next table. We were all in the same group where I was on a committee. And they were saying, we have to destroy the black church because the black church is still preaching things that should no longer be preached. They're not. And Obama went into black churches and actually said, hey, you guys got to stop speaking against certain things because. So they literally launched this mm -hmm. attack. Mm -hmm. You fast forward to 2020. And you have the Los Angeles Times, that article, you have pastors pumping their fists at a Black Lives Matter meeting in LA mm -hmm. as they call up the spirit of those that have been killed by the police, as they pour out libations, as they call on Nigerian goddesses. And here are black pastors. In fact, some of our Entangled own- Entangled in this necromancy. And they don't understand, you, 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 you can't, you know, you can't, you can't live in both worlds. No. And if you really want the world to change, that's, that's okay. The church can do what it needs to do to be involved in better policing in their community. They can be involved, I would argue, be involved in lowering crime in your community as well as better policing so that it, it's easier on both sides. Right. But when this begins to happen, you can now inject into the church directly spiritualism in the name of social justice. Because the pillars of your community are the ones introducing it, heralding Absolutely. it, practicing Absolutely. it. And because it's all around you. And, and what, what the viewers need to get is there is an absolutely new way, a new spiritual economy is the way I'll say it. Mm -hmm. And no longer is it about being righteous like Christ. Now it's being righteous in that you fix this world. 
right? Which God never claimed was going to be eternity. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of Of this this world. world. Right. And this is one of the reasons he was crucified. So make it clear. Is God asking us to be activists? God is asking us to be active, but not necessarily activists. He, the Bible calls us to go out and to work on those issues in our community that affect people, especially those that are disenfranchised and poor. But if it's only based on what we look like, we aren't really elevating, right? We should be going out and looking for anyone disenfranchised anywhere in the world and doing a service for them. Because when you isolate a group, you basically oppress the group that you're not serving. Absolutely. And here's where it gets, here's where it really gets uh, kind of challenging. If the church isn't careful, they can literally make the mistake the children of Israel made at the time of Christ. Are we speaking of Barabbas? We're speaking of Barabbas. So let's, so we, if you step back, remember that after Jesus fed the 5,000, mm-hmm. they wanted to force him to be king. They were angry that he wouldn't accept being king. And that's why Jesus sent them off in a boat by themselves. He retreated in a mountain to pray for them. And then the storm hit them and he came walking to them on the water. So his inner circle had this desire and so did the Jewish nation at large. A lot of people. Can you imagine how effective Jesus would have been as a revolutionary? No. The Roman Empire, let's just remember, because people don't get that Jesus actually suffered more than we, many of us have as, even as black Americans. Jesus grew up in a poor neighborhood, Nazareth. It was such a questionable neighborhood that one of his disciples said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Mm-hmm. So if you come from a bad neighborhood, he understands that or one of low reputation. Uh, reputation. Jesus said the foxes have uh, of holes, the birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He understands poverty. Right. Jesus right. understood oppression because the Romans were in Daniel chapter seven, Daniel chapter two, when it describes Rome, it, it's iron is the, is the metal used, the legs in Daniel two, it was a crushing force, mm-hmm. powerful muscles, the teeth of iron, crushing force. They were under horrible oppression for decades. And they wanted to be free and they wanted the, the throne of David to be reestablished. And they thought this guy can do it. Can you imagine having a king who could heal people if they got stabbed in battle, who could feed them if they ran out of food by just breaking up a little piece of bread? This was the king. Right. He wouldn't take it. You fast forward all the way to where Palm Sunday, they're crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're ready. OK, here's our king. We're we're going to we're going to do this. He's going to do right by us. He's going to do right by world. us. Right. The next week mm-hmm. he's standing next to Pilate with Barabbas assumingly on the other side, the, except now Jesus has been beaten, crown of thorn been put on his head. He looks emaciated, he looks weak. Barabbas is strong, Barabbas has committed murder for the cause. He has stolen for the cause, he's in, uh, started riots. And they said, listen, we want Barabbas. Away with this man and give us Barabbas. Why? Even Pilate said, but this, I find no fault in this man. It was because they wanted their own liberation now. Mm-hmm. I want to submit to you at any cost necessary, which is another political movement that happened that didn't really go anywhere and led to the death of its uh, uh, leader. Malcolm X, absolutely. Who was raised Adventist? Many people don't know. But this thing that happened with Barabbas and Jesus, when they were standing there, the people had to make a decision. Do we want freedom and liberation now or do we want to wait for this kingdom to come that he's talking about? Which is the whole point of being selected and being called to be people of God is you were supposed to be studying prophecy and awaiting the arrival and wait for him to point to the new direction. And they weren't. And I say all of that to say this, do not choose Barabbas today. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful with, with with feminist movements, BLM and all the other movements with all the different communities. You get caught up in that and you want to fix it. You want righteous indignation. That becomes your new spiritual currency. You miss true spirituality. You know what Jesus says instead? He says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And that is the movement for us today. It is a difficult movement because many people think you're a good person when you fight all of this oppression. You're a good person when you stop the patriarchy. You're a good person when you stop the heteronormative ways of society. I want to submit to you, there's nothing good in you no matter what you do. And one of the great um, deceptions of the occult is that somehow there is divinity inherently in you. you. That goes all the way back to the serpent in the garden with Eve, that ye shall be as gods. Mm-hmm. That is, the, that is the, the crux of it. And literally, that, ha- that has hit black America. Black America got caught up in um, the 5% nation of Islam. The black man is God. The white man is the devil. Go back and look at it. That is the foundation of hip hop. Everybody from Jay-Z to the Wu-Tang Clan, the Big Daddy Kane. All of these people are five percenters. This has been infused. It is a cult. Um, a, a cult theology 
that has become popularized to the point where people don't even realize it. And like you said, because it was in hip hop, it was disseminated amongst a specific group and then it came to maturation and here we are in the midst of it. And it is big now. Mm -hmm. It's big and it is pulling young people out of church. This, the Hebrew Israelites, there's all these movements pulling young black and Latino, especially young people out of the church for the cause of the day. So it's causing destabilization. And so there's not going to be any progress because no one can agree on the right action. And Absol they're not looking up. Absolutely. They're looking within. They're looking inward, mm -hmm. which means they're really looking down. Right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so you're right. But then again, but there's power. So if you go back to Revelation, mm -hmm. you know, if we go back to, I'm, I'm going to read uh, Revelation um, 16, 13, just to read one of the verses as to why this kind of a thinking is so, is so dangerous. Or I'll read, actually, let me read it. Revelation 18. This is the last part. Revelation 18, verse 23. Um, it says, for, it says, um, for by thy sorcery, speaking of Babylon, were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. There will literally be an attack on the people of God because of these movements. It is going to turn that happening. and come against us. And you have to get that now. Now, when I was, when I was young, um, and I, we moved from Connecticut to Miami, and... I went to a high school, Miami Palmetto Senior High School is where I went. I actually gra graduated, I'm in the same yearbook with uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, the latest Supreme Court Justice. We were seniors together at Miami Palmetto High School. But that school was so racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had these kids who wanted to be Nazis. I, I used to think they actually were, but now in hindsight, I'm like, they're probably just kids thinking, Confused. just being bad. Mm -hmm. They'd put SWAT stickers all over stuff. They would, they would, I remember going into the bathroom and it's, it's, it used a racial expletive, go back to Africa, and it was horrible. And I was very hurt. I came out of high school angry. And so I understand the spirit behind a lot of what these people are into. You get hurt like that, you want to retaliate. You want revenge. You want all of these different things. Even though you grew up with a seven-day Even Adventist. though I grew up in an Adventist home. So did that pull you out? Almost. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I was rooted and grounded enough that I never left, but I studied with the Rastafarians, mm -hmm. which is a form of spiritualism. They now worship a dead Haley Selassie. He's not alive, mm -hmm. yet that's who they worship. And they had some theologies that kind of were strange, um, including marijuana smoking, which will destroy your brain. Um, then I studied with the Nation of Islam. In fact, at one time, um, I was so into the Nation of Islam, which is Louis Farrakhan's mm -hmm. organization, that I'd get special seating when he would come to town and speak. I grew up in Berkeley, and he has a famous bakery on the border of Berkeley and Oakland, so I, I'm familiar with that family. Nation of Islam is big. I studied with the 5% Nation. Mm -hmm. I used to go to all, look for all African people's revolutionary party meetings. So what I'm hearing is that you were searching for truth, I was, even though you started with I truth. was searching for a way to dampen the pain. Oh, okay. It wasn't truth because I couldn't find it in any of them. And I, so I'll jump to the end. How I got out of it was I actually went to go hear Louis Farrakhan on a Sabbath afternoon after church. I was in medical school. I went to the Miami arena. I was at the University of Miami then. And he said in one of his messages, the black man is the original man. And I said, hmm, I've heard that before. But he said, and I can prove it. I said, okay, I want to hear this. Mm -hmm. He said, 66 trillion years ago, mm. the black man blew the moon off of the earth with dynamite. I said, what? Now, I was sitting with these two young ladies, brilliant young ladies of Haitian descent, both in law school, and they and the other 8,000 people in the arena stood up and started applauding. I said, first of all, 66. Is it because he showed documents? I said, first of all, this, well, how can you document 66 right. trillion? Photographs? Crazy right, right there. And then, and, but then it was like, I said, the Chinese invented dynamite, and that was like 3,000 years ago. How in the world did it, you know what I mean? Like, right, it doesn't, right. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Then he said, I can prove it. He said, when the astronauts went to the moon, mm -hmm. they could still smell the dynamite. And I... It's completely different atmosphere. The laws are different. I repented. Yeah. Fifth grade science tells you the only thing you're smelling on the moon is what you brought with you from Cape Canaveral or Houston. That's right. Right? You're, you're yeah, not you're smelling nothing on the moon as you're no. dead. 8,000 people applied. And I said, in my, I mean, at sitting there, I had gone to church that morning. I should have been at AY. I said, how close am I dancing with the devil? Mm -hmm. This is such dangerous doctrine. And if race becomes your religion, you're done. True indeed. Because you're not going to heaven to a race-based heaven. Right. Regardless of what side you're on. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. 
And, and it's tough because the oppression is real, just like it was real for the, the Jews. Mm -hmm. In fact, in AD 70, the Romans come in and wipe them all out. It, I mean, it, it wasn't unreal. Who escaped the destruction of the city of Jerusalem in AD 70? Only the Christians. Why? Because they listened to the prophecy of Luke chapter 21, when Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation and the city surrounded with armies, leave. Right. And pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. I mean, Jesus laid it out. And those who understood prophecy lived to actually build the next kingdom. They heeded the word. They heeded the word. Instead of sticking to their own laurels. Absolutely. And fashioning their own exit plan. Right. And if you're not careful, and let me, let me, you know, I don't want to have a lot of time, so let me say this piece of it. We were talking about backstage, and you can look this up online. Snopes actually verified this as, as mostly true. Hillary Clinton used to commune with Ele um, uh, President Roosevelt's uh, wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, well, uh, you know, as a spirit, I guess. Um, Nancy Reagan, when she was in the White House, had an astrologer. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. White people are not your enemy, and no. white people, black people aren't your enemy. No. If you're a Christian, you're, you understand from the scripture that your enemy is Satan himself. He's my enemy. Right. People aren't my enemy. People are victims of what sin has done in this world. And if I don't understand that, I will get, I will get my, into my feelings. But the Bible says it this way. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in, in high, high places. places. Yes. If you're looking at the people around you and they're your enemy, you, you lost it already. Right. You got to remember that Lucifer, the prince of the air, the one who thought he took this planet as his own, he is your enemy. Once you understand that, you'll want to be a part of the kingdom that opposes him. And then your Christianity will begin to fall into place. Your service in this world will begin to fall in place because you're not trying to serve to fix this planet. You're serving to build the kingdom. Kingdom that's coming in this forever. Absolutely. So what I'm hearing is basically that we don't necessarily have the correct answer in terms of social justice to the oppression that's happening. What would you recommend people start doing now to make a, a subtle shift that could lead to a, a bigger shift? I think, again, I'll go back to what I said on the previous episode. God made the human heart so big, only he can fill it. And the world is in pain because as we extract Christ from it, it's funny, as bad as black people had it, and we did have it bad, but during Jim Crow and segregation, the families were actually more intact. They were. Uh, you know, the, the, the demand for education was actually higher. Right. Right? So if we, it, the truth of the matter is, what the world really does need is Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and so our churches in the inner city should have tutoring programs for children. That you could, that's social justice, making sure kids can read and, and go on to school and do well. I remember when I was in, in LA, we, uh, the church, Altadena Seventh-day Adventist Church, our gym was the only place the Bloods and Crips would come and play together. Some of those kids, our youth pastor actually took to Oakwood mm -hmm. um, to see Oakwood and to expose them to that. That's, that's a good form of social justice. And it's low cost. Low cost. It requires very little Tutoring effort. is low cost. Yeah. Feeding programs are low cost. They're f food banks feeding people. But you know, one of, a lot of our churches feed people whatever they're given. Feed them the best quality food. Ask us, say, listen, we want to feed them according to the health message. And here, teach them. Black people in America die from health disparities at a rate that is appalling. What if we were a place to create blue zones in the neighborhood mm -hmm. to transform black lives. We found that there are things called black blue zones. That would be powerful social justice. So some of our viewers may not know what a blue zone is. So the blue, just tell them. Blue zones are the part, the five areas in the world, everywhere from Icaria, uh, Greece, to, to uh, Sardinia, Italy, to Okinawa, Japan, to a place in Costa Rica, to Loma Linda, California, mm -hmm. where, where there are more centenarians, more people who live over the age of 100. And there are black blue zones we found. Even our little church, the University of Connecticut approached myself and one of the other black doctors from, one, from our church that I grew up with, Faith SDA Church in Hartford, um, and asked us how so many of the people at that church, in a neighborhood where the average life expectancy is 65, how do so many of them live above 90? And we were able to share with them the health message. That's social justice, right? Right. And that is gonna change people's lives and actually add power to their life, strength to their life, and years to their life. So we need programs like that. But let me say this, do not be afraid to preach the everlasting gospel. The undiluted truth. Don't, stand, don't, don't think that if you stay, because that's ultimately what will liberate people. We'll take them out of their conditions and elevate them up. If all you do is preach to them where they are, a name it, claim it, prosperity gospel, you're not really building it's people of up. no effect. But when you teach them that they must have the character of Christ, mm, yeah. everything around them then has to change. 
Well, this is so intense, and I know that our hours or our half hour is winding down. If there's a place that they could go get a little bit more information and hear one of your sermons on this, what would you say would be the best place to go? Audioverse is a great place to go. If you go to audioverse.org, um, there's a lot of sermons there. I'm doing a series right now on last day events. Um, before that, I did one on the new start on the health message and, and, and on, on the sanctuary before that. So there are plenty of, of materials there in our churches, the Three Angels Church in Newington, Connecticut, uh, the stuff on, the, on there. But it's really not about me. I no, mean, no, I'm, no, but just I, love, yeah. the more, I, I would like them to get a more in-depth understanding of what you're talking oh, about. Oh yeah, and it's all there, true. Where you could cite, you know, articles and show them, just be able to break it down oh, it's in all a more comfortable pace, yeah. you yes. know, because this is just a half hour yeah. segment. No, very true, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I don't know. No, <laughs> no, but you are the expert, so that's why we, we've called you in. But I, what I really want to encourage people of all colors, of all nationalities, of all languages, is that there is a unity in Christ. So we're talking about social justice. Mm -hmm. Social justice is fragmenting society. There's a good book I just read, How Civil Wars Begin. And that's literally what they say has to happen. These are, are liberal writers saying that. The church must be the place. Jesus says, by this will all men know that you are my disciple, the disciples, because you have love one for another. One of the proofs of the remnant church is that we are a diverse, ethnically diverse, racially diverse, gender diverse, like, you know, everybody is here, but we are unified in the Holy Spirit, unified under the blood of Christ, Praise unified God. in cause to spread yeah. this gospel, finish this work so we can all go home. That is the antithesis to the social justice occult movements of today. Beautifully said. Closing thoughts, Dr. Walsh. My closing thoughts are that we are watching the evisceration of society, of its unity, of how people come together. It's not an accident. There's a whole occult underswing pushing us in this direction. But I wanna encourage the viewers to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That really is the answer, is that we must all turn our eyes towards Christ and move in that direction because this world's not gonna last very long. And on that day, when the, when the, when the Lord returns, Nobody's going to be able to sign up based on race for what comes next. It'll be because we have the character of Jesus Christ. Well said, Dr. Walsh. Thank you so much for being here. The media has convinced people that Christianity is oppressive and the cause of our problems. From the perspective of God, however, all people, regardless of color, have been oppressed by racism. God never intended the color of one's skin to delineate justice. Whether victims or benefactors of the fruits of slavery, we all have been spiritually compromised. Until next time, this has been A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing.